I have a game to play with you guys. Never have I ever had an embarrassing moment on set. I am embarrassed every day. <laughs> on set and off set. Oh, all the time. Oh yeah. Walking on set usually is the yeah. beginning of the embarrassment for me. <laughs> and it gets progressively worse from there as soon as I open my mouth. No, I've, I've, I've gotten radically injured on set. I had a piece of, on Mad Men, I had a piece of the set fall and hit me on the head, and I had eight stitches in my head. Jeez. The only two times I've been injured on, on, on any set were on Mad Men. Like, the least action-oriented <laughs> thing ever. It takes place in an office that I broke my hand and I got hit on the head. How did you break your hand? Doing a weird stunt that was like a flashback. Smoking like a cigarette really hard. Yeah, really hard. hard. <laughs> <laughs> enough time on set to have embarrassing moments, so never have I ever. I'm sure that will change, though. Embarrassing. Yeah, all, all, you know, so everything happens on the set, yeah. you know. Never have I ever had a secret party trick. I can wiggle my eyebrows, like do the worm with my eyebrows. Can you show us? One, two, three, go. That's impressive. It's kind of rusty. <laughs> I don't think it's rusty at all. It's so cool. Do you have a party trick? Yeah, I can balance stuff on my head. What kind of stuff? Well, I don't know what you got. <laughs> Here, check it out. <laughs> I can probably do this. I know I could do this. Well, not today, but I could do this bit. Never have I ever gotten a tattoo. I have a lot. Do you want to get a tattoo today? Yeah. Okay. I've never. Never. I have a lot of tattoos. My entire back is covered in tattoos. Wow. That is not a lie. That's me. Yeah. And it's, I know it sounds like I'm being like ironic, but no, I am actually being serious. This. I'm covered in tattoos. Is it one big piece or what? It's a collection of different pieces, but they all sort of marry together so they look like one piece, but it is like many different pieces that I've gotten since I think I started tattooing when I was about 18. So they go from like here up to my armpits and like across the the top to bottom of my bathroom. Never have I ever checked into a hotel with a fake name. I do all the, every time. I have one time because my team was like, do you want to check in with a fake name? I'm like, oh my God, that sounds so cool. What was it? I think it was Super Lynn. It was my character's name at the time. What was that? Lynn Chaney. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I always do. Because it's just, it's, then, then people can't just prank call your room or ring you up or weirdos. You yeah. just, you gotta avoid weirdos. Avoiding weirdos is 70% <laughs> of my life. Never have I ever? Oh, I have, yes. Quite often, yeah. Can't tell you the name, though. <laughs> do you have any old ones you could old share with ones? me? Nah. Occasionally I'll do the characters that I'm playing in the movie, you know? Never have I ever had an embarrassing username. My old Instagram name used to be Brunette Potato. <laughs> I also formed a band called The Potatoes. You really love, love potatoes. I love potatoes. She eats them every morning if yeah. she can get them. Yeah. Skate Demon 76. Oh dear. Yeah. With an 8. SK8. Sure. Extra rad. I get it. Yeah. Uh, mine, no. I, mine, I, was, I, was, I'm dumb, I was dumb enough to like put my real name in as my username, so. And then I'm like, well, why did I do that? Come up, <laughs> just come up with anything, and then they don't know it's you. Oh, stupid. Never have I ever used someone else's toothbrush. I've used someone else's toothbrush. Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need to brush. He doesn't need to brush his teeth. Brush themselves. <laughs> his abs brush his teeth. <laughs> it's really creepy to watch. <laughs> it's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> have I used? No, I use my other half. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you have to. Yeah. Never have I ever had a crush on a fictional character. I probably. Oh, I've definitely been Princess Leia. 100%. Like, that was a major moment in my you know, seven-year-old existence, was figuring that, those feelings out. <laughs> yeah, I had a crush on Helen Mirren in Excalibur. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Hubba hubba. Yeah. Yep. And, and Jennifer Connelly in uh, Labyrinth. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Two good movies. Of the comic book Archie. You know, right, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Veronica that always right. kind of turned me on. I feel like it was someone from um, X-Men or something. Veronica's a great one, especially uh, you know Riverdale. Yeah. yeah no, I'm not, I'm not hip to yeah, There's yeah. a new TV show that's all about that. Oh, that, yeah. wow. Yeah, I don't know about that. And never have I ever been a total fanboy. I will say that I did this exactly one time, and it was to Jeff Bridges the year he won his Academy Award for uh, True Grit. And I, I've never, I rarely get starstruck or that way. And I came up to him, I was sort of introduced to him, and I had, I couldn't say anything. I wanted to say everything, and I couldn't say anything. Yeah, yeah. That was my that was my time, yeah. and I felt like he was like 
What's wrong with you? you know? <laughs> it's like a guy going like, <laughs> it's like a fish. What was the funniest part of your filming experience? Well, I know, we all know what it is, I think. Squiggly Wiggly? Yeah. Chris Hemsworth does this squiggly wiggly dance with his shirt unbuttoned and he looks like a big chiseled noodle. That's probably the best way I've ever had him described. Big chiseled noodle. I did see in another interview with you, Decatur, you said it was very distracting having him around with his shirt off. Tell us more. I just found it to be difficult to focus on dying when he had his body all noodling around the room. <laughs> And I wasn't the only one. I know Jeff Bridges was laughing, and also Lulu was laughing, and it was difficult. And I think that maybe we were laughing more because it was like a break from feeling so distraught and scared and sad in that scene. I would also like to praise him on his accomplishment for achieving his old physique. It must have taken a lot of hard work and zero fun. What do you do for a workout? A noodle. <laughs> <laughs> Just noodle around. <laughs> I didn't share any scenes with Chris, so my experiences with him have always been shirted. Very unlucky experience. So I wish, you know, yeah. one of these days. It was a blessing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I think you said his abs were shiny. Yes, yeah, each one has its own little sparkle, which I love. <laughs> no, it's, it was crazy, they're ridiculous abs. And we're doing an intense scene, so it's a little bit like, yeah, and I'm in a stool, and they're very much Tied up and level. weeping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We did have a moment of hysteria during the roulette table. Whilst we were filming that little section, yeah, there was a moment of hysteria where we just could not stop yeah, giggling. Chris does a lovely Chris dance, does that dance that and we just chortled it, pretty yeah, yeah, I don't know that we expected it to happen, and then it happened, and then we were yeah. all like yeah. dying of laughter. I've heard yeah. a lot about this Chris Hemsworth noodle dance. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's literally what it is. It's a noodle dance. It's a noodle dance? I've yeah. never heard of it. Oh, like yeah, well, there you go. All right. Yeah. How distracting was it having him around just shirtless and noodly? Well, the noodle dance is distracting anyway because it's <laughs> hilarious, and I think that's what it's for anyway. But, you know, after a while, it, we realize that it's part of a costume, and more than anything, you just realize how great he is as an actor because it just all lends itself to this character that he is, and he's brilliant. As a, he's brilliant. What he did with that role was really special. One of my other favorite scenes in the movie was when you got legend on your head. <laughs> Tell us about shooting that. Many different takes, many different angles. I was doing all of the bludgeoning. There was definitely a glass type bottle there and it just takes some practice. I, I had to practice with the stunt supervisor. I had to make sure that I was doing it safely. And then we just made sure that we moved like it was convincing enough to, to do it. I just love the fact that it was so surprising for everyone. That's my favorite <laughs> yeah, thing, yeah. yeah. We had very different experiences on the film. You know, uh, Lewis was in his, you know, top to bottom. My experience was a little more truncated. The most fun was really just the high, high, high level of filmmaking that everybody was operating on. Drew had a very specific idea of what he wanted from moment to moment and, and scene to scene in this movie. And to be able to work on things that are seven, eight minute long tracking shots that do not cut away, that are so highly orchestrated and highly fine, finely tuned. That's fun. Like that's, that's getting to do like some really cool jazz as a, as a, as a musician. Like that, that's pretty fun. Yeah, some like real movie making. Some, yeah, yeah, some real movie making. Not just master, then over, over, master, over, over. It was, it was like really using all of the tools at our disposal. And we had some pretty cool tools. Yeah, yeah. Other than your own backstory, which character's backstory did you like best? I really liked the character Miles in the film. I thought the reveal is so earned, and it's it's been teased throughout the whole movie. Like, he's got this weight, he's got this secret, he's got this thing, he really wants to get off his chest. Like, what is it? What possibly is it? And then when it's revealed, it's revealed in the most kind of sickly, fascinating way. I really liked that one. I just said thanks as if I wrote the thing. <laughs> I'm true Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not to just you know, predictably toss it right back at you, but I think it's a, it's a really good challenge that you kicked ass in, is like, is having one one character, and which is so believable, and making it as believable as possible, and so that the payoff of when you find out a different layer of within that character is extra explosive. It, this beginning scene, it's like, it's seriously a riot, and you have this uh, amazing southern accent, and somebody was asking, you know, what's it like to try and Act as it's very meta because you're acting as somebody, acting yeah. as somebody, acting as somebody. But it's not really anything different. It's like what Rando said, acting as survival or whatever. Because really, you had to do that as best as possible in order to survive. You had to play that character mm -hmm. that's playing the character. It's 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 kind of cool to, but a bit of a rabbit hole. <laughs>